Ailing John McCain is once again the media's favorite Republican. Well, now that he reportedly does not want President Trump at his funeral, and he also wishes he hadn't picked Sarah Palin as his, as his running mate back in 2008. But McCain's fondness for the media hasn't always been a two-way street, as they routinely have trashed him when it suits their own purposes. In a 2006 <laughs> article headlined, John McCain, The Sellout Express, the Huffington Post called the senator a, quote, pandering politician who will stop at nothing to get elected. Well, McCain's, McCain's great sin? Well, agreeing to speak at Jerry Falwell's Liberty University. The Atlantic ran a piece during the 2008 presidential campaign titled McCain the Sellout, based on a fear that the candidate might govern as a conservative. And in a 2010 Vanity Fair piece headlined, The Man Who Never Was, McCain is called so desperate to keep his Senate seat that he, quote, repudiated his record, his principles, and even his maverick reputation, entrenching himself as the anti-Obama. We're here to talk about McCain. The man is James H. Warner. He was a POW with him during the Vietnam War. Uh, Jim was uh, a POW for six years and also my old colleague in the Reagan administration, a former policy advisor to President Reagan, and Frank Luntz esteemed pollster. He's going to show how the media have used McCain over the years to fit whatever narrative that they find convenient at the moment. It's great to see both of you. Uh, Jim, I want to talk to you first. First of all, it's great thank, to see you. Long you. time. I was young. You were, yes. you, you were even more handsome back then, back in 1987, <laughs> sharing an office that's together. Be, that's before uh, I got took on the appearance of a homeless person. Oh, no, no. We liked all that. It's all cool here. Uh, Jim, uh, look, you you better than anyone know the, the experience that John McCain yes, yes. Uh, had in Vietnam. You've known him for a long, long time. I know you haven't seen him for a while. Mm -hmm. But is it is it surprise you that he at the at the end decided you know he was going to make his funeral plans and make it explicit that Trump was not to be there? Yes, it does. But it, it, I don't know how far advanced this this uh, cancer is. But I know that uh, I was told that it is very aggressive, and to say the things like he did about Sarah Palin, that's that's look. I was with him. I warmed up an audience for him the day after the convention in a little big rally north of Detroit. And uh, he tried to introduce me to Sarah Palin. And we couldn't get near her because she was just mobbed by people. He was there and the, at the convention when he introduced her. And he saw the electricity. I'll tell you how it affected us. We were up in a booth. I turned to my left. I was sitting next to Bud Day, the most decorated American oh, yeah. warrior in all history. And Bud had tears in his eyes. <laughs> he was so moved. And that's what the effect she had. So for him to be doing that, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to hold anything against John for what he says in the last year. You know, I don't know how much this disease has affected him. But uh, no. the John that I know was one of the greatest heroes I ever knew. I'm one of the finest men I ever knew. Frank Luntz, uh, it is interesting to go back and see those headlines from all of the elite publications. John McCain, the sellout. John McCain, the phony fraud, all the things they said. But now he's hitting Trump. And, you know, he's obviously been, a, you know, at odds with Trump on a number of policies, immigration, foreign policy, trade, to name a few. Uh, and now, uh, not just because I think he's obviously suffering terribly. I've lost three friends to glioblastoma in the last few years. It's a horrific disease. But it, it, you see the, the, the ebb and flow of their relationship. Well, it happened in 2000 when he was running against W. It happened in 2008 with Mitt Romney. So this is nothing new. And John McCain understood how to use the press to his own advantage. It's one of the reasons why he's such a good politician. But, and by the way, I want you to know that it is an honor to sit next to you. And Thank frankly, you. I feel the same way about any of these men. They suffered, truly suffered, yep. in, in prisoner of war. And... I, it, it was Donald Trump, I don't know if you remember, who I was asking him questions in Iowa. And he actually, it was my interview where he said that John McCain's not a war hero. Now, he walked that back yep. later on. But uh, McCain and the press, it's, it seems like a pretty good relationship. Well, um, this is what S.C. Cup uh, said today on, I believe it was CNN. Let's watch. He is not a sellout. And I think having President Trump, just because he's the president, come speak on on his behalf or eulogize him or memorialize him would be selling out. 
And Senator McCain, I say this not just as his daughter's best friend, but uh, as, as a Republican um, who, who supported him, um, Senator McCain is everything that President Trump is not. I have, I have to say that somebody should have told Donald Trump before he said that about John. John was hit by a SAM, and he ejected, and his airplane was just disintegrating. One of the wings came off, and as soon as his chute opened, it broke both the wing flew, swung around, broke both of his arms and one of his legs. So I don't know how he was able to uh, open up his May West, much less how he could swim. Well, I have no idea how he survived in the lake, but I know that he could not possibly have done any resistance because his, he was helpless for several, several weeks after that. Bud Day had to take care of him. Bud Day had to feed him. Were you, could you hear him where you were in the Hanoi Hilton? Could you? Uh, I, I lived with him for two years. Okay, in the same... But you were separated for... Because you were there for six years, and you were separated for a long time. Yeah, but I, in 71... Uh, there was a big uprising amongst us. And John McCain, is, even though Bud Day was a senior man in his cell, John McCain was credited with being the, the leader of that. And in fact, uh, on March 19, we, they took 36 of us out. We thought, we honestly thought we were being taken out to be executed. And John McCain made a joke about it. Wow. A man who can volunteer to die for religious freedom, that's what it was and make a joke about it is really a top guy in my, I mean, I hold him almost the same status as James Stockdale. Wow. Well, you know, it's, it's it, it, to just hear these stories, Frank. And, and he wouldn't go home. To, they, they, they said to him, go home. Yeah. But because he wasn't in the, uh, in terms of being captured, he yeah. refused. And so they beat him for it. And those that are critical of him, because they don't like how he's voted on certain issues, who among us in this studio would give our legs, our arms, our body, our lives yeah. for the country? But he also said it's fine. He also said, I think at one time, like, well, I was a POW, but we can disagree. I mean, just because, right. like, there were a lot of, like, John, John Kerry was, you know, he served his country proudly on the Bronze Star. Of his, but we disagreed with him on a lot of issues. So it's okay to disagree with people. Mm -hmm. It's just because you, know, you disagree with him on a, on, a, on a lot of issues. And yeah. I, I assume you wouldn't disinvite Trump to your funeral, but that's his decision. He wants to do that. But the media are playing this cynically, Frank. That's what I'm Great. saying. They're playing it when, he, when he's with the conservatives, when he was running for re-election, he's strong on immigration, he's strong. They were hitting him. But when he's hitting Trump, it's a different deal. I hope that he, that he is still alive. I hope that he still gets a chance to see that in the end, in so many areas, so many areas, not all, that he was right, that he was courageous, and that in the end, there is someone that we can say to our children, that is a role model. And think of how few role models we have today. No, I don't like what they said about Sarah Palin. I don't think that was necessary. And I think if you don't want Trump to be at your funeral, you can just say, you can make it known. I don't think you have to, like, write it in the book or whatever. Say. I mean, look, you can do it. Everyone can do what they want. But, like, there's a way to get that message out but without, that, like, eh. But that's well, not his career. Yeah. We should not judge him yeah. by those Yeah, I, I, I say what, what he's saying right now, I, I can't, yeah. hold, you know, it's... I, I don't know how much that disease has affected him, but I know it's the frontal lobes, and that's where you think. And by the way, Jim, when you were, because you showed me this book, you wrote a calculus book. Was that right? Yes. In, it in, was, it in was analy six years. Analytic geometry, calculus, and differential You showed equations. it to me at the White House. I was yeah. like 23. I was like, I still don't understand calculus. You're writing this while you're a prisoner of war for like 100 pages on this tiny little book. And I, I tell that story all the time. Actually, it's now in the Marine Corps archives. You can go of, to Quantico and see them. Of course it is. You are amazing. I love you and I adore you. Frank, thank you for being with us. It's a great conversation. And uh, God bless John McCain, his entire family. Uh, it is a brutal disease. We need to find a cure for, uh, for all cancers, but glioblastoma is especially awful.